Hi, I'm Dominic Giles, and uh, I'm here to talk about Oracle Database Compression. So, um, in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, we'll go through some of the capabilities, and we're going to be focusing on OLTP uh, compression in this particular session. So, we're going to be looking at row-based compression and the compression of the associated B-tree indexes with those tables. And the idea being here is that we can significantly reduce the overall size of the database. It's worth pointing out at this stage though, we also do compression for backups and for lobs, um, and obviously the columnar-based compression in technology like Xdata. Actually enabling um, the OLTP compression is very simple. All that we need to do is to specify the keyword row store compress advanced um, for our table definitions, and we will go through and compress um, the data inside of those as we perform DML operations. And the same is true for indexes. Again, the keyword compress advanced low and advanced high for data that's less actively updated as well will enable us to go through and compress that information. But let's take a look at it in action. So we're inside of Swing Bench here, and what I'm going to do first of all is to go through and create a new order entry schema. So I specify the keyword create, and we're doing this from the command line, and then we kick this off. Now this um, could take a little bit of time to do, and the data that we're actually creating is uncompressed at this stage. So let's just go through and speed this up a little bit and end up with a fully um, created uh, order entry schema at the end. And it'll, we'll do this in fast forward from here on in. Whilst it is running in fast forward, it's worth pointing out that we're creating a one gigabyte uh, schema in this particular instance, and it will have all of the indexes and everything else um, built for us. So now that we've finished that operation, we have our schema. Um, we can see uh, that it's uh, validated the actual tables and indexes and stored code that exists between them. So the first thing we want to do is to take a look um, at the actual um, data that we have inside of them. We're going to be using the sbutil uh, function. It's a small utility that comes with order entry. And here we can see that the table size, as we'd expect, would be about um, uh, a gigabyte in size. So let's get a baseline before we do anything else of the performance of transactions as they execute on top of this particular database. So we're inside of the Swing Bench utility, we're connecting to the database that we created our data set against, and we can go through and run these transactions. And if we leave this running for a time, we can see that um, as we're performing DML operations, um, we're getting roughly around 400 or so um, transactions a second, and the wait time is largely around log file sync and that's predominantly down to the fact that I am I'm doing this on my um, workstation and I don't have a fantastic IO subsystem underpinning it and I'm doing lots and lots of transactions but we'll just stop this um, uh, in, in a second because I think we only need to run it for a short period of time and what we can do uh, once we've stopped it is to go through and take a look at those transactions okay so let's stop this now And if we go through to the output tab, we can see here that we've got roughly, um, on average, about 400 transactions a second, which is good and, you know, is typical for a um, running on a, a standard workstation. Now, if we take a look um, uh, one more time at the tables that we've actually created, again using sbutil to list the actual tables inside of our schema, we can see that it's a gigabyte in size. So the underlying data set is a gigabyte in size. What we want to do now is to use the sbutil to rebuild that data set. Um, um, what we're going to do is we're going to sort the data and we're going to apply advanced compression to it. So this utility will do the whole thing for us. So we don't need to run any scripts or anything else. Um, and it enables you um, as an end user to go through and try this out with, very, uh, you know, without having to understand all of the syntax and configuration that underpins it. And again, let's speed it up 10 times. So again, now we've actually gone through and we've rebuilt um, the data set. We can see here that whilst originally it was uh, roughly about the tables that we were looking to compress, which were all of the big ones, the tables that we're actually inserting data into, was about 955. After the compression, 
we've actually shrunk the entire data set down to 492 megabytes. And, you know, some tables will compress more than others. Um, clearly, uh, tables that have lots of changing values, like the order items table, it's lots of numbers um, with very little repetition, they're not going to have much compression. But other tables, like the customers, um, where we've got large, repetitive data that we can um, use symbol tables to reduce in size, we'll see a big reduction. So, rerunning the workload against this um, particular compressed data set. What we can see right off the bat is that even though we've gone through and compressed this data set, um, it hasn't uh, resulted in a significant impact or degradation in the overall performance of the transactions we're running against it. And this is important. Clearly, um, you know, if you're using advanced compression, you don't want to have to trade the actual overhead of um, the savings you make in terms of space savings on disk to a degradation in terms of transactions. And the elegant thing about this is that it's not just the transactions um, that aren't reduced, obviously the size of backups um, that is significantly reduced too. And we can see here, in fact, rather than actually resulting in a slowdown in the overall transactions, we may actually be experiencing a slight increase. And that's probably down to the fact that we can fit more into the buffer cache. And as a result, the transactions happen uh, much faster. Okay, so um, we've taken a look at order entry. And um, just as an aside, it's worth pointing out that um, you can also benefit um, from using this technology in other um, areas of functionality too. So a good example of this um, will be if we take a look at the sales history um, schema uh, as well, which is another um, more um, decision support type um, schema uh, inside of the data set. Again, it's roughly a gigabyte in size. Um, we have 14 um, million rows inside of the main fact table. But what we want to show here is that um, applying advanced compression, even on a hybrid, if you like, um, data set, won't necessarily slow the overall transactions down. So what we're going to do here is start the workload against sales history, um, and then we'll go through and compress it. But let's just get a baseline figure for running um, this largely query-like workload against our sales history um, data set. And again, the benefit that we actually see here will be largely confined to the um, dimension tables rather than the actual um, base facts, unless we're getting lots and lots of repetition in the fact table, which which we may do. Um, and it's worth pointing out that the compression is occurring at the block level. We're generating a symbol table at, for each of the various blocks and then replacing repeating values with entries inside of the symbol table. And again, worth pointing out that um, the actual data that we actually create um, is read into the memory of the database, into the buffer cache of the database in compressed form. So there's no uncompression that needs to take place. And again, for these reasons, um, you know, we make better use of the overall memory available to us, the actual caching that we can actually achieve. And so even in um, workloads like this, um, we should be able to see very little degradation. So this is the number that we've actually got um, for running against an uncompressed um, hybrid um, workload. So let's now go through and uh, compress uh, this particular sales history schema. Um, again, just using the SPUtil to do this for us. And we're going to uh, create a duplicate of the data inside of that data set and apply advanced compression against it. Um, and we'll run through this and again we'll speed it up um, uh, 10 times. Okay, so um, now we've actually got our data set compressed. If we take a look at the size of the data set, it's reduced, it's gone from 1.4 gigabytes down to 800 gigabytes. And again, what we can see here is some tables are benefiting from the compression rather than others. So whilst um, the sales table hasn't shrinked significantly, the customer's table has gone from 361 megabytes down to 36 megabytes. And yeah, that's nearly a 10 times um, compression ratio that we've actually achieved on that particular table. Okay, so now that we've actually rebuilt it and compressed it, let's rerun that um, same workload against the sales history data set. 
Okay, what we can see here if we re, um, start that workload is that we should end up with pretty much the same or, or, or in fact slightly better and of course these are much larger transactions that we're actually running against it so I do recommend that uh, you know if you have the opportunity you know you can take these tests the software is available from my website www.dominicgiles.com and retry them on your um, environment you know make the data set significantly bigger but what you should see is that regardless of whether you're running a pure OLTP or a DSS workload, you should see some advances. Now the truth of the matter is that you'll see significant improvements if you use either hybrid co columnar compression or effectively our in-memory technologies over what you can actually achieve with advanced compression. So this is just simply in indicating that you're not going to get a degradation by using this functionality in this space as well. All good, so roughly about the same number um, for using advanced compression on DSS workloads other, um, with the benefit of saving a lot of space. Now up until now we've looked at data. In 12.2 we've introduced, and, and in the Oracle 12 database we introduced some functionality to improve the compression of indexes as well. So what we can see here are all the indexes associated with the order entry um, data set. And now some indexes are candidates for compression and others not primary keys and unique identifiers typically don't um, compress and so there's no point doing them. So let's just rebuild the uh, comp advanced compression on top of those that are likely to do that. And that's what we're doing with the SVUtil. So we've dropped the indexes and rebuilt them using advanced index compression. And now when we take a look at these indexes, um, we've dropped the size of them to uh, 574. So this again isn't a huge difference in the overall compression and some indexes are significantly smaller than others. So if we take a look at the index that we created on the lower name, it was 30 megabytes originally, but after we've compressed it, it's gone down to um, 14 megabytes. So again, um, you know, we've reduced the size of that index by half. And um, you know, again, what we'll do now is um, go through and uh, rerun Swingbench against our data set, which is now compressed both the data and the indexes associated with them as well. So we're running on purely compressed data sets at this point in time. So again, let's just go ahead and start this workload running. And what we should see, even though we've compressed both the underlying data and the underlying indexes, it makes um, it ha doesn't have a um, significant detriment on the overall performance of our transactions. And again, depending on the workload and the transactions we're actually running, we may indeed see an improvement over the uncompressed data as we're able to fit more into the buffer cache and reduce the amount of physical I/O that we actually need to do to the database. So the transaction workload looks exactly the same as we've seen in the previous runs. So let's just stop that and take a look at the results for that uh, execution. And what we can see here is the um, average transactions is um, 469. So uh, in this particular run, slightly slower than just pure advanced compression on its own right. Um, um, but again, faster than what than what we saw with the normal indexes. Now, in this particular run, um, we um, compress the indexes using advanced compression low um, of the indexes. Let's go through and change that and compress them still further using um, high. And again, we first need to drop the indexes. And now we just need to rebuild them using um, compression high. Okay, so um, and what we should see again here, if we run the, through this very quickly and jump right to the end and list those indexes, we can see that again we've had another reduction in the size of the indexes. And in fact, if we take a look at the index that we created, which with advanced compression low was 14, um, now it's dropped to 5 megabytes, so six times smaller than the original size um, we actually started with, which was uh, 30 megabytes in size. So it's dropped from 30 megabytes down to five megabytes. Six times improvement in the overall 
um, size of the index. And so that's all I really had to say uh, and show in terms of uh, working with advanced compression um, for OLTP workloads. Um, it's a, some great functionality in there. I'll post some links at the bottom of the page to uh, so that you can take a look and see um, what's available in terms of collateral. Um, I'll also post links to my website where you can download um, this software, the order entry transactions, so you can try this at yourself. So the next time round we'll take a look at um, some of the hybrid columnar compression um, uh, activities and see what impact that can make for uh, read-only workloads. Thanks very much.